to learn about cis, trans, or E and Z geometric isomers, particularly for alkenes. Now, we've learned about alkanes isomers before, and we said that isomers for alkanes were the ones with the same chemical formula, but different arrangement. The same with geometric isomers, they are also the compounds of the same chemical formula, but when we say geometric isomers, they're a special type of stereoisomers. So stereoisomerism, in which geometric isomerism is one example of it, is a certain isomer in which the spatial arrangement of your groups that are attached to your carbons with the double bond are different. Now, when we say special arrangement, now take note of the presence of your double bond and where the groups are located with respect to, the, to where your double bonds are. Now, on the screen, I'm showing to you these two types of geometric isomerism. The cis, in which you look at the groups to be on the same side, like the methyl, the CH3s are on the same side of your double bond. Same with H. But when we say transconformation, we see the CH3 to be on the two carbons, the two carbons with the double bond, and it's opposite to your opposite sides of where your double bond is. Same with H. So when we say cis, you see the groups to be lying on the same side of the double bond, where, where for trans conformation, you see the groups to be on the opposite side of your double bond. So you see, let's first compare what if you have a single bond and what's the difference when you have a double bond? If you have a single bond, you have what, what we call the free rotation. So if you have this particular figure, which is also represented by this expanded structure, wherein the green balls represent your chlorine, wherever you place the chlorine, whether on top or below each of the carbon within a single bond, they mean the same compound, meaning their arrangement are just the same. They're, they're exactly the same compound identical because in a single bond, you have sigma bond. A sigma bond allows free rotation of these groups or these atoms. But when you have a double bond, there is already a restriction in the rotation. When we say restriction in the rotation, you can't just transfer or twist your groups that are attached to your carbon and just make them the same molecule. So say, for example, this 1,2-dichloroethene, your 1,2-dichloroethene, you can put actually your chlorine in two ways. You can put it opposite the double bond, in which case this is a trans dash 1,2-dichloroethene, which is so much different with cis CIS dash one two dichloroethene because they're on the same side of your double bond. So if you have this particular conformation, these two compounds are actually different because their properties will greatly be affected when they are arranged in respect to where the double bond is located. So if they are opposite, we call that trans, and where on where if they are on the same side we call them cis. Okay, now let's look at this as a summary. So when we have a single bond, geometrical isomerism is not possible because of the free rotation of the sigma bond. While if you have a double bond, cis and trans are possible, but not all the time. Cis and trans are possible. And when you have cis and trans, remember where the groups are for you to be able to identify them properly. So geometric isomerism is possible if you have a pi bond. So in this case for introductory organic chemistry, it is with the presence of your double bond. So how do we apply this? First, what if you are to ask to draw the geometric isomer of but 2 in? But 2 in means the same with 2 butene in which your double bond is in carbon 2. Now, you might be tempted to just draw it the usual way, which is the condensed or the skeletal way of drawing but 2 in. But if you are concerned with geometric isomers of that compound, you must draw it this way. 
you emphasize what are the possibilities of placing our CH3, meaning the tips where your basis will be the C double bond C, where the CH3s can be placed. Because when you have um, when you have a double bond and then two bonds surrounding it, you have a trigonal planar here. All of that are actually trigonal planar in shape per cluster of your carbon with the three bonds surrounding it. So once, once you have that, you can actually imagine that you can have a transbute two in because you can put your CH3s opposite your double bond and you can also have a cis but 2 in because you can put your CH3s on the same side of your double bond. In that case, you can clearly see the possibility of having a geometric isomer trans and cis. So remember, if you are asked to draw for an alkene structure and at the same time you are to identify if the geometric isomer is possible, then you have to draw it this way expanded in a way so you'll know the different groups involved that are attached to your C double bond C. It's important that you acknowledge where's the C double bond C before you look at and examine the groups that are surrounding it. Now this time let me present to you four cases so as we will really know how to recognize the possibility of our geometric isomers. I'll give you four cases and I hope that you will take notes of this so you will not forget and you'll make this as your reference later on when you get to answer cis and trans isomers exercises. So how do we recognize the possibility of geometric isomers? Let's now look at this first case. In this first case, you see that your black circles represent your C double bond C and your purple circles and the blue represent your groups that are attached to your C double bond C. Same color and sizes means the same group. If you see on the left side for both structures, the same group is present. It's the same type of atom. On the right side, you have different groups. Does this qualify for a cis and trans isomer? No, it doesn't because there, the compounds or the groups that are present on the left side of your C, left side of your double bond, are the same. It should never be the same group. Take note, first, is it should not be the same group. So if you see more or less the same conformation, please discard that, and that is not a cis or trans compound. Okay, how about the second case? In the second case, you examine there's still C double bond C. On the left side, you see purple and blue, purple and blue, but... The blues and the purples are grouped here. They're opposite side of the double bond, like forming an X. Here, they're like forming parallel lines. So if you see, it qualifies to be a cis and trans compound. This is your trans because they're in the opposite side of your double bond. And this is your cis because they're on the same side. So this is a check mark for cis and trans compound. How about this third case? In this third case, you see still C to C double bond, but your purple and green, you have purple and blue. Purple, green, purple, and blue. And you see two different groups on both left and right side of your C, C, double bond, C, double bond. So C, sorry, C double bond, C carbon atoms. So you see two different groups. That means two different groups. Qualify for a cis and trans configuration because you see all the the green and the blue here and the purple, I mean the green and the purple, uh, the green and the blue, sorry, I'm mixing up the colors. Green and the blue and the purple and the purple are on the opposite side. So you get a trans conformation. On the other hand, you see purple, all purple on the top while you see the green and the blue to be at the bottom. So you get a cis conformation. So that's it for the third case. So third case is a yes as a cis and trans compound. How about the fourth case? You see a sophisticated molecule here. If you see a sophisticated molecule, but the groups are still different for both the left and the right side, this is still a cis and trans compound. However, because this is a complicated compound, then you get actually a specific easy notation. 
So we will not tackle any more the easy in this video because this is just an introductory chemistry video. So just for you know, this is approved as a cis and trans compound. So that's the last case and that's one of the possibilities that you can get a cis and trans compound. In summary, so to get geometric isomers, you must have two things. Restricted rotation in which there should be a C double bond C. And second, two different groups on the left-hand end of the bond and two different groups on the right-hand end. And it doesn't matter whether the left-hand groups are the same as the right-hand ones or not. So take note that it should be different left and right and not necessarily that they're the same. Take note of this summary and proceed to the exercises that you need to do to apply the learning that you get from this video. So let me end here. This is Madam Narka saying don't stop learning, relearning, and unlearning. Till next time, if you like this video, if you feel that this helps you, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and share this to others who you feel need this particular video. So bye. God bless you. Till the next